Bishop's lavish life, is it time to rein politicians spending in? Clever or cruel, parading kids on reality TV. And rough and ready, concerns as porn becomes the norm. Hello and welcome to Backlash, the show where opinions matter the most and controversy is king. And with me each and every week in the studio, the women who say it how it is. Rendezvous editor Sarah Lamarquin and news.com.au's Melissa Hoyer. Ladies, as always, an absolute pleasure. First topic of the week this week, and there are ongoing calls for Speaker Bronwyn Bishop to resign or get the sack after her high-flying lifestyle was revealed. It all started with a $5,000 helicopter ride from Melbourne to Geelong, but has since escalated into a lavish lifestyle lifestyle fit for kings and queens. While Ms Bishop has volunteered to repay the cost of the chopper flight out of her own pocket, we're yet to hear whether she is willing to chip in for a recent $88,000 two-week European trip. While it's essential our politicians represent us as a nation in the highest possible esteem, is it essential that they take it to such an expensive extreme, Mel? No, I mean it doesn't have to be this expensive, but the problem is with, with travel and we are talking politicians or the same I guess with CEOs, they're not going to go somewhere international and stay at a one star place. I mean, it's just not, you need to have basically, when you are traveling that much as a politician, you need to have around you and surrounding you what you would have at home. And whether that is a secretary or, you know, the right sort of stuff, even just to, to you to, to be online. But that said, when you do look at these figures, I mean, all of Australia has been totally sort of dumbfounded, but I don't think it's something new. I mean, probably Bronwyn Bishop's amounts have been perhaps, you know, also equaled by other fellow politicians. So sure, this time Bronwyn Bishop has been the person who has absolutely been pillared about it. But if we went back to probably every single politician, it is going to be there one way or the other, whether they're in, you know, they're, whether they're in the government, current government or whether they're in opposition. Yeah, she's certainly not a first. But as far as salaries go, those of our leaders do shy in comparison to what many of them could be getting if they worked in the private sector. So this begs the question, should we actually increase the salaries of our politicians but then make them participants of their own policies? By that I mean cover their costs up front only to be able to claim them once a year at tax time like the rest of us. I bet if that was the case, Bronnie would have thought first before agreeing to pay 24 bucks for a single bottle <laughs> of beer. Sarah, what do you think? Oh, absolutely. Uh, she would have thought twice and, and so she should. I agree. Um, the same sort of claiming rights that all other taxpayers are entitled to should be extended to our politicians. Look, it's absolutely true that public life and public office is a really noble cause when it's done well. And I don't think we should be underpaying or undervaluing our politicians, but they do pretty well. Our MPs are actually among the highest paid in the world. Our Prime Minister earns more than the US president, for example. So Tony Abbott is uh, paid about $100,000 a year more than Barack Obama. So Not with the exchange rate now. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, uh, Obama will probably do quite well when he sells his memoirs when he leaves office. But, of course, our former prime ministers can go on to do very mm. well at, as well. Uh, Moira, when you say uh, they'd be doing well in the private sector, that's true, but that's because our CEOs in Australia are massively overpaid. So I think to the average earner and the average taxpayer, we see this uh, bloated and rotting of the system. It is offensive. I agree with what Melissa said. I think the issue is much broader mm. than Bronwyn Bishop. We need to be very careful about making it a witch hunt yes. and fixating on one person. Mm. There is a long history of this happening and I think it needs to be cracked Obviously, down across like, the board. New parameters need to be made because it's all very grey. It's a very grey area that they, we're looking at now. I mean, mm. I think even the pollies don't know what they are entitled to and what they're study not. study trips that they all take? Mm -hmm. I mean, this lavish <laughs> two-week yeah. European holiday, that is not isolated. Exactly. Wow. All right, we could talk about it all day. Uh, sorry to uh, extend that a little bit longer than it had to, uh, Ms Bishop. Our next topic, a reality TV show in the UK on Channel 4 is sparking some debate as it enters the final stages. Now, the reality show, it's in its third year. Uh, it sees contestants aged between 8 and 12, so uh, sort of young kids still, vying for the crown of smartest child in Britain. It began with a group of 20 kids but has now been whittled down to the last few who are under enormous amounts of stress. 
Australia also has its own version of a reality clever clogs show. Here's a look. <laughs> Absolutely mind blowing. The length of the words, I can't even pronounce some of them. Numero ultra microscopic silicone volcanic radiation. You're just watching these kids come alive. I've got butterflies in my stomach, my hands are shaking, my teeth are chattering. My heart's thumping, bump, 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 bump. Just focus, focus. Really scary. I'm so nervous for him. I shake. Diversify. D. I-V-E. Wait. They have a choice at that moment to have a go or to give up. Well, watching these children is rather fascinating. Some suggest it's nothing more than exploitation of innocent intelligence. What do you think, Mel? Well, certainly it is scary when you look at these kids under this amount of pressure. I mean, you look at kids who go into a sporting field they don't look as stressed as that. So I do worry that there is this um, this ridiculous amount of stress pressure that is being sort of thrown onto them, which ultimately perhaps could lead to them becoming depressed or you know becoming quite withdrawn. So we can't take these sort of basically reality shows this seriously. Are the kids old enough to cope with that oh, level no. of, of, of uh, I mean, disappointment would, if they fall out? You would hope that at the uh, at this TV studio there would be psychologists there because seriously some of these kids they like this little one here he's tiny and they cr they cry because they can't get a, a word right mm. you know and that isn't something they're just going to forget in one minute so I just hope that the right sort of duty of care mm. is happening when these shows are being made yeah well put well while the children on these shows are strangely endearing it's the adults that truly capture my attention as a parent I can't help but cringe at what they're forcing their kids to do and wonder whether it's really just about them satisfying their need for fame <laughs> fortune and flair Sarah if that is what's happening, then that is inappropriate. Uh, if they are living vicariously through their children and they're forcing their children, then I think that's massively inappropriate. I know for me as a parent, my child would really, really want to have to do it very badly and they would have to talk me as the parent into it before I would ever let them go anywhere near that sort of pressure cooker environment on national TV. You're down for Nickelodeon, whatever. <laughs> Said, yes. What I love about this is that at least they're celebrating academic achievement, yeah. Yeah. spelling and intelligence rather than it's, just... It's not a beauty pageant. It's no, not it's beauty not an Instagram yeah. it's not it's petition sporting. for a, a three-month-old. That's right. You know, yeah. that's great because we don't necessarily say to young boys and girls, what's up here is really important. I mean, we say it, but do we follow through? Absolutely. And at least this is applauding those exactly. characters. Exactly. It's not about wearing the best little frock and putting a shot up on mm. Instagram. It's not about even and getting up and doing a little twirl with a baton on an on a entertainment show. So, yeah, mm. yeah I think celebrating academia, Seth, totally, mm. I get it. All right, our last topic of the week now, and pornography has always been popular. There's no question about that. However, the evolution of today's most popular porn has a lot of women gagging, quite literally. According to Australian adolescent sexuality expert and researcher Mari Crabb, recent analysis of the most popular porn has found 88% of scenes include physical aggression, such as gagging, choking and slapping. In 94% of those scenes, the aggression is directed towards women. So over the last decade, slapping women around and destroying them sexually has come to be normalised in sex entertainment. While many people find this highly arousing, should it be allowed to be labelled and classified now as mainstream pornographic entertainment, Mel? Well, it's certainly not mainstream. I think this is a thing with porn now. Years ago, porn, it, it wasn't mainstream. You literally had to go to Canberra and go to, go to one of those porn shops and buy a video. I mean, you it still wasn't... Go there? I'm all every week. I'm all, that's why I'm going to come. But, you know, but let's face it, we can find it. Our kids can find it. We can find it. We can go out into our computers right this minute and absolutely access any degree of porn. And unfortunately, the harder core porn that we are seeing, some pe people in society think that is the norm. That the way that the, the sort of the anger and the just the, the revolting stuff that is in some of these porns. That is seen as normal, and it ain't. That is not a normal sexual healthy lifestyle. Mm, well, despite society's acceptance now of what was once considered a taboo topic, health experts say porn has actually become the main sex educator of adolescents. As a result, young girls are increasingly being asked to or expected to follow that script in real life. 
as a parent of boys, Sarah, this certainly makes your job of raising two young gentlemen extremely difficult. It sure does. And it is making it much more difficult for an entire generation of parents because that's right, uh, porn has always been around, but I believe it's now 30% of internet traffic is devoted to pornography, which is a staggering figure and just goes to show how accessible it is to young minds. What the, that means is that for a lot of young men and women, their first sexual encounter is completely based on their understanding mm. of sex as gleaned through pornography. Then we see that not just a minority of porn is uh, aggressive or violent, but the overwhelming majority of it, 88%, that is, again, a really alarming figure. And my heart really goes out to young men and women who come out with these crazy warped ideas of what is normal. As Melissa said, that is not normal. Uh, young girls think that that's what they're expected to do. Mm. And for young men, as mum of boys, I just know there's going to be a lot of difficult conversations yeah. to be had as they grow up because that... you how would they know? They yeah. see that and what's so tragic about this is actually the commercial imperative mm. of it. Mm. I don't actually know that um, it, it's public demand, it's just that that's what the producers of this particular brand of pornography think works well and so everyone's doing that in, mm. in the mm. pornography I've got industry. I've a 13-year-old 13 year old, 13 year old son so he's getting mm. to that point where all of this is potentially accessible to him mm. and really Maybe he's looking at it. Mm, and you know, he's not going to be showing me. Because so, the boys so, also have the expectation that they have to perform to that same level that the, the men mm, in these uh, films are, exactly. are, are performing. Exactly. But the Absolutely. industry is worth, I think it's like, is it 25 or 30 billion? billion. Mm. So, you know, it, man, it's, it's money, money. That's mm. really why it is as big as it is. Mm. Quite literally. <laughs> Before we end up, let's take a quick look at this week's Shock Rock. And stepping away from clothes to hairstyles this week, this mega mullet has become an internet sensation, catapulting yet another bogan into <laughs> Facebook fame. <laughs> Ladies, shall we all go for the shave? I've not seen one person yet going to any hairdresser to actually get it done, but oh hey, God. good on them. There's you know, a little bit of the Ruby Rose no. side shave going on yeah. that's quite popular at the moment. A little bit, but yeah, I think that one's just taking it to an extreme. No, I saw a replay of a 90s sitcom where George Clooney had a mullet. Now, if he can't pull off a mullet, no one can. Uh, that's all we have time for. More Backlash next week. See you then.